After you find what the graph looks like, you're going to talk about center and spread. So again, after shape, you're looking at different types of center and different types of spread. So in this case with centers, we have mean, median, and mode. Mean is what they call your typical average overall. It's typically denoted by X bar. And the equation is the sum of all the individual values X divided by the count N. So if I had 10 people in a room, I want their average age. I would sum up, that's the summation, everybody's age and divide by N, which equals 10, the number of people that I'm sampling from. Median, capital M, is your middle number. And what we're going to find out for this is to find the position, we're going to use n plus 1 over 2 to find the position of the median. Because if there's a middle number, well, then that's great. That's the median. If there's two middle numbers, you take the average of them. Mode is the most repeated number. You can have more than one mode, called maybe bimodal if there's two of them. You can have no mode. That means they all occur the same amount of times. So you have mean, median, and mode for your three measurements of center. So they ask for a measurement of center. It's got to be a choice of either mean, median, or mode. Then we have spreads. This is called spreads or dispersion, basically how spread out the data is. First, we have range. Range is going to be simply max minus min. So if the, let's say we're doing age, the oldest person in a room is 25, the youngest is 17, 25 minus 17 is 8. The range of age in that room would be 8 years. IQR is interquartile range. So think of quartiles, quarter 1, quarter 2, quarter 3, quarter 4. Well, the interquartile range is going to be the third quartile minus the first quartile. That's going to be the 75th percentile, the lower 75%, minus the 25th percentile, the lower 25%. If I take 75th minus the 25th, that's the middle 50% of data. That's what the IQR measures, the middle half. Standard deviation, you're going to end up using a calculator for it. So if you actually want to calculate it by hand, you have to take every single individual value, subtract it from the mean. Square it all, sum it, divide by the sample size minus one and square root. And this measurement of standard deviation is basically the standard deviations from the mean that we'll be discussing. And if I take that and square it, that's what variance is. Not really used right now, but later on in statistics, it becomes important. Beyond that, you might be asked what affects the centers and the spreads. So you might hear something about either being sensitive or resistant. So I want to make sure we note, what is sensitive? Sensitive means that if I go ahead and add an outlier, it's going to completely like change the actual answer. So we have, again, sensitive versus um, resistant overall. So sensitive would be actually be the mean and the standard deviation. They actually go together. These two values are sensitive to outliers. So if I all of a sudden have an extreme value, like let's say I have ages of people, um, 18, 20, 25, 22, 21, and 60, that will completely change the mean overall. And that will change the spread of data, the standard deviation, quite a bit. The ones that are not sensitive, the ones that are resistant overall, are going to be the median and the IQR, because those are placeholders. So those are going to end up being, again, only affected by positions. They're called resistant to outliers overall. I'm trying to color coordinate here, if you haven't noticed. I'm trying to have a little method here. Resistant. Resist. It. I can spell. Okay, awesome. Beyond that, it's making sure in this video that you know how to actually calculate all this. So that's really the focus. That's just a little extra we'll be talking more about, but check this out. Ready? Let's hear given the following data set. You're asked to find the following centers and spreads, the following statistics of this data set. So right now, what I see overall is I see a sample size of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? So the sample size is equal to 9. That's important. As far as the mean, you would add them all together and divide by 9. And if you did that, if you added, you know, 0 plus 3 plus 3 plus 7 plus 9 plus 10 plus 13 plus 16 plus 18, and divided that by 9, you would get about to two decimal places. X bar is 8.78. The mode is the most repeated number. That one's pretty quick as well. The mode, well, 3s repeat the most. So the mode's going to be 3 here overall. And then the median, I would use the equation n plus 1 over 2 to find the position. So 9 plus 1 divided by 2 tells me the fifth position. Make sure it's in order and count in 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, or backwards, one, two, three, four, five. There was an odd number, so I knew there would be a middle number. The median is nine. It's not this nine, it's this nine, making sure you know that's a coincidence. Now, range. Range is going to be max minus min. So for max minus min, well, the largest value is 18, the smallest value is zero, so the range of values here is 18. IQR. So now we remove the median, and there's four left on each side. There'd be a sample size of effectively four and four. And so for the IQR, Q3 minus Q1, we're getting half of the lower half and half of the upper half. Half of a half is a quartile. So I'm using the same equation over here, four plus one over two, which is a two and a half position. One, two and a half. I take the average of three and three and I get to no surprise three. One, two and a half. So it's two middle numbers since it's even. 13 and 16, the average of that is 14.5. 14.5 minus 3 will give you an IQR, an interquartile range of 11.5. The middle half of data spans about 11.5. Standard deviation, you would use a calculator for, you'd end up getting 6.16, and variance would be the standard deviation squared, you'd actually get about 38. These values you would use a calculator for. The rest of these are reasonable to ask without a calculator, but at the same time, you're going to see in the, in the uh, upcoming video, I'm going to do all this with two calculators, a scientific and a graphic, just depending on which one you're allowed to use. So stay tuned for that, but I hope you saw an example here of how to actually calculate a lot of these statistics for centers and for spreads.